A uh, longtime Trump friend and advisor, Roger Stone, was indicted and quickly arrested earlier today in connection with special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into uh, Russia and the 2016 election and all of that. Um, we're gonna give you the details. Before that though, I do wanna say I absolutely despise talking about Roger Stone. It's one of the things in the news I hate the most. I think it is an indictment of American society that he is able to acquire any political power in the first place, let alone become newsworthy as a result of his involvement in an election. I think it's awful, I think he's awful, and I think that we are all made worse by having to think about or look at him in the first place. That said, here's what he was arrested for. The charges focus on Stone's alleged lies to the House Intelligence Committee during 2017 about his statements about and efforts to get in touch with WikiLeaks during the 2016 campaign. The indictment also conspicuously mentions that, quote, a senior Trump campaign official was directed to contact Stone about what WikiLeaks might have on Hillary Clinton. As of this point, that senior Trump campaign official has not been identified. We don't know for sure, perhaps at some point we will. The evidence that people are talking about implies that it is Steve Bannon, but I would not consider that to be any sort of guarantee or verified fact at this point. So um, there are seven counts, they have to do with lying to the House Intelligence Committee, uh, but we do have to acknowledge the indictment does not attempt to explain why Stone would lie about this or lay out a definitive story about what did happen between Stone and WikiLeaks back then. Stone also has not been charged with any criminal activity occurring during the campaign. So all of the indictments right now, the reason he was arrested, are about charges that came about from activities after the election. Now there are activities that related to the election, but they are not specifically alleging crimes during the time of the election. They are all after 2016, so bear that in mind. But in the indictment, the documentation that the Mueller team put forward, there is information about some of what was going on during 2016. So part says after the July 22nd, 2016 release of stolen DNC emails by organization one, widely believed to be WikiLeaks, a senior Trump campaign official was directed to contact Stone about any additional releases and what other damaging information organization one had regarding the Clinton campaign. Stone thereafter told the Trump campaign about potential future releases of damaging material by organization one. So although the charges and indictments don't, don't say that he committed crimes in these activities, they do make clear that they have a documented paper trail of him communicating with people in the know about what WikiLeaks was going to release, him giving the Trump campaign sort of a heads up about it so that messages could be coordinated and sort of a timeline mapped out based on that. Uh, a little bit more, it's, we could go into a great deal of detail about this. It pains me to go even into this detail, but here is some of what went on the back and forth during that time period. On July 25th, 2016, Stone emailed uh, Corsi, one of his, um, one of the guys that pops up a lot in Stone related stuff. Uh, and also part of the indictments have to do with him threatening Corsi, telling him to quote, get to Assange in the Ecuadorian embassy in London and get the pending WikiLeaks emails. Corsi forwarded this email to an overseas individual that is not specifically identified. On July 31st, just one week later, Stone wrote to Corsi that Ted Malik, a Trump campaign advisor, should see Assange. A little bit later on August 2nd, Corsi emailed Stone claiming knowledge of Assange's plans, quote, word is friend in embassy plans two more dumps, one shortly after I'm back from a trip in Europe, second in October, impact planned to be very damaging, end quote. That's from Corsi. Quote, would not hurt to start suggesting HRC old, memory bad, has stroke, neither he nor she well. I expect that much of next dump focus setting stage for Clinton Foundation debacle. Okay, so based on the documents that were eventually released, we know that regardless of exactly how the information was communicated, what was alleged in these emails between Corsi and Stone was borne out. That was the information that WikiLeaks had access to. The uh, Trump campaign was given a heads up to start to coordinate that message. And you saw that those stories, whether about the Clinton Foundation or the more specific stuff about Hillary Clinton having a bad memory or having a stroke was disseminated and right wing pundits went crazy with that stuff. And that was one of the storylines attacking Hillary in advance of the 2016 election. So part of that hypothetically did come from this coordination that was going on right now. 
Now, despite all of that communication back and forth, by 2017, Stone was putting forward an apparent cover story for whatever actually did happen in 2016, which we don't know much about at this point. He was insisting that everything he heard about Assange and WikiLeaks came from just one person, talk radio host Randy Credico, whom he called his, quote, intermediary. So when Stone went to testify before the House Intelligence Committee in closed session in September 2017, he stuck to that story. Mueller has indicted Stone on five counts of false statements during that testimony. So as with some other people, most of the crimes involve lying to investigators looking into all of this. So at this point, as some contrarians who always jump to the defense of Trump and his team when these sorts of stories come out uh, have pointed out, it's entirely possible that he was lying about all of this, but no crime underlying the lies was actually committed. That is possible. It seems a little hard to believe, a little nonsensical why Roger Stone, as well as so many other people orbiting around Donald Trump, just decided that they were gonna lie to the House, they were gonna lie to the FBI, they were gonna lie to the Mueller team constantly about all of these topics, totally independently, and to cover up no crimes. They could have done that. I don't really understand why you would do that, since they seem to be aware of the fact that you could go to jail for that. And he potentially faces a couple of years in jail, depending on exactly you know, what the judge adjudicates with the, the, the crimes that are alleged. Now, Donald Trump has responded saying, greatest witch hunt in the history of our country, no collusion. Border coyotes, drug dealers, and human traffickers are treated better. Who alerted CNN to be there? So that is their conspiracy theory that has developed in the wake of CNN uh, seeing the arrest. CNN has responded, we got there through journalism. There was grand jury activity last night, which is similar to what has happened in advance of other arrests. So we staked out Roger Stone's place because he has been one of the perceived targets of this going forward. So that seems like a bit of a dodge. He is already out, by the way, on a $250,000 bail. He has that privilege that all rich people have where he didn't pay any of that yet. It's just if he violates the bail, he has to pay. Many people around the country are staying in jail because they can't pay their bail. But for him, the $250,000 is this ephemeral, wispy thing that he doesn't ever have to uh, actually pay. So he says he's gonna plead not guilty. He, uh, he gave the old Nixon thing, and people are pointing out that's a bad thing to do if you wanna get across that you're innocent. I think he knows that. He is a <laughs> troll, okay? Like he's an objectionable person in virtually every way, but I think he's making a joke there. Just heads up to the media. There's a lot of stuff to attack uh, Roger Stone over. I think he gets that. Anyway, a uh, stupid story in a stupid timeline in the stupid state that America has, fe- has seen itself in. We'll have more details if and when they ever develop. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.